Excellent. Uh, thank you so much, Ashley, for the great introduction there. Again, welcome everyone to another great webinar, part of our public uh, webinar program. Today, we have a very interesting topic, and it's one that honestly, uh, you know, many enterprises have been waiting for us to talk about, and it's about the Azure Monitor agents. I think it's critical for us to talk about how, due to the disparate environments that a enterprise may have across their enterprise, you know, they need to have a seamless way to collect data to actually make use of that data. So today we're going to cover everything you wanted to know about the new Azure Monitor agents with Microsoft Sentinel. I'm I'm Christopher Munoz, Program Manager with, with the uh, Customer Experience Team, and my responsibility is to work with enterprises to modernize their security operations. Today I have my great colleague, Maria. Maria? Hi, Chris. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I am, as Chris said, I'm also part of the uh, customer experience engineering uh, team for uh, Microsoft Sentinel. Excellent. Excellent. So before we even get started and we actually dive into why do we have a new agent? So what is the Azure Monitor agent? How does it work in respect to Microsoft Sentinel? We want to do a quick poll. So please, uh, you know, to, to know where the audience is joining us from today. So please go, go to pollev.com forward slash AMA webinar, or if not, you could scan the following QR code that's presented on your screen right now. So pollev.com forward slash AMA webinar. We'll give it a few uh, seconds here for, every, for everyone to navigate there and be able to vote on, you know, where are you joining us today? All right, so we already have some folks that have voted in so far. OK, so we have a lot of folks. Yeah, let's see if we have it. OK, the US is kicking in now. Excellent, excellent. Thanks again for, you know, being part of the poll. We have a lot of folks. Europe area, US, Canada as well. Excellent. Latin America is, is also here as well with us. In Africa as well, we have folks that are tapping in. Also in Asia as well. Again, thanks again for uh, joining us today for this great conversation that we have. Let's give it a few more seconds as well. Excellent, excellent, perfect. Thank you, thank you again, and again, welcome to this interesting webinar that we have today on this very, very important topic. So today we want to talk about how do we actually get going with the Azure Monitor agent. Why do we have a new agent? All right. What did you know? What what are we trying to do with the, with this new agent? And how are we trying to consolidate the functionalities part of data collection? You know, what is Azure Arc? You know, how does Azure Arc fit into the picture when it comes to us collecting data from non Azure machines? We're also going to cover the different supported scenarios that are currently supported, uh, you know, between the Azure Monitor agents and also the log analytics agents. We all know that the log analytics agent is a very popular uh, data collection tool that enterprise are using to collect critical events from their uh, di disparate environments. We're also going to talk about again how does the Azure Monitor agent fit into the into the whole spectrum with Microsoft Sentinel, and also how how we're supporting the collection of security events before and also now. We have other different critical features part of the Azure Monitor agent, which is really going to paint a better picture in a more seamless way to collect data. And that starts with the Windows forwarded events. We're going to talk about how that feature is currently in public preview. We're also going to talk about how can we get granular, right? How, how do we have a scope and unique configuration when it comes to data collection? And we do that with data collection rules. We're also going to talk about the different resources and the different vehicles that we have to deploy the Azure Monitor agent at scale which also takes us to the Azure Monitor Agent Migration Tracker, which was actually created and developed by our customer experience team. And that is one resource that can help you migrate from those legacy agents to, to the Azure Monitor Agent. And of course, we're going to cover, you know, why and how should you migrate to this new agent. So without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and, and cover the first topic of why do we actually have this new agent and you know, how does the Azure Monitor agent replace the legacy agents? So the Azure Monitor agent, it replaces the following agents 
that are currently being used by Azure Monitor to collect guest data from virtual machines. The first one here is the log analytics agent, and the log analytics agent is sends data to a log analytics workspace and supports VMs, v, uh, VM insights, and also monitoring solutions. The, the next one here is the diagnostics extension. This one sends data to the Azure Monitor metrics, which is only Windows only, and also brings in data into, in, into the Azure Event Hub and also Azure Storage. Last, the last agent here that the Azure Monitor agent is going to replace is the Telegraph agent. So the Telegraph agent sends data to Azure Monitor, and this is only for Linux. So how does the Azure Monitor agent step in? The Azure Monitor agent is meant to consolidate all the functionalities that we have here so, so that we can have one single agent that we can use to upload data right into Azure Monitor. So even agents like, like for example, the log analytics solutions or the management packs, we will have its own extensions with the Azure Monitor agent. So we, we do understand that we have a lot of agents, so we're trying to consolidate that into a more seamless way and only have one single uh, vehicle that can help you bring in data from different sources. Next here is the management overhead. We, we definitely understand that by having multiple agents, that definitely uh, means more maintenance and more management uh, when it comes to actually managing uh, those different agents. It definitely means additional work, right? And you know, prior to having the Azure Monitor agent, there was a lot of installations that had to be done manually. A lot of manual work and there wasn't you know a lot of automation so you know we had to go to arm templates or if not powerful scripts to be able to automate uh, these different agents also something else that on top of being able to maintain how do we actually deploy and scale you also had to worry about things like for example workspace keys certificates which again you know can easily be uh, forgot or if not uh, you can easily lose those different parameters so with the Azure Monitor agent, the whole scope behind it is to have a non-config deployment, which uses actually a managed identity to authenticate uh, when it comes to your data collection. Next is slower innovation. You know, because we have to maintain different agents, we're going to have uh, to have a, a additional workload when it comes to engineering. That's definitely going to slow down the innovation that we do. Uh, you know, for these different agents. And one quick example here that I definitely want to highlight is that for the Azure Monitor agent, we've reached a 5K EPS per server on Windows, which 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 actually with the monitoring with, with the Microsoft monitoring agent, it was just 1,000. So those are just some of the innovations that we're able to drive more rapidly by having one single entry point or one single control plane. Another one that I definitely want to highlight, and this was definitely, definitely critical, was the lack of granularity. So the because the collection for, for like for example, the log analytics agent was done at, at the workspace level, any machine that was connected to that workspace would have the same configuration. Right? We we definitely had a challenge when it comes to how granular and how scoped we can be when it comes to the configuration. And that is the reason why. With the, with the Azure Monitor agent, now we have data collection rules that really allows the flexibility for us to get granular and for us to get specific when it comes to what we actually want to bring in into Microsoft Sentinel to then be able to build use cases, analytic rules, hunting queries, and, and be able to make sense of the telemetry that we're bringing into Microsoft Sentinel. Something else to know is that with the data collection rules and being able to get granular, this definitely enables cost optimization across the enterprise as well, which could definitely be a big, um, huge plus for many enterprises. So we talked about the why new agents. I have a pretty cool graphic here that shows, uh, you know, the different um, OSs that we're able to support with the Azure Monitor agent. So Windows Server is definitely part of it. As I said before, at the beginning of the presentation, we have disparate environments. We have data that's traveling everywhere. It's, it, it is critical for us to have an agent that can definitely tap in to, to those different sources. So Windows Server is definitely supported. Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Linux uh, Enterprise Server, Ubuntu Server, CentOS, and then we could we come a level down to be able to target on-prem um, sources and also sources from other cloud, including Google Cloud, Azure, and also AWS. So with the Azure Monitor agent, we're able to we're able to bring data from disparate environments and be able to bring that into one single control plane. Something that I do want to note is that for non-Azure machines, Azure Arc is a requirement 
for these different machines. So as I said before, customer environments and application environments are definitely evolving. How do we actually bring that data back into Azure and then bring that into Microsoft Sentinel? So a couple, I have four different questions here that I think that every enterprise is concerned about and is definitely having you know, conversations when it comes to this. And the first one is, how do we actually govern and operate across disparate environments, right? Data is definitely traveling er everywhere. Our, our um, scope when it comes to the enterprise is definitely getting expanded by the day because we have different sources and you know different innovations that are forcing us to uh, operate that way. Then the second one is, how do we actually ensure security across the entire organization? How do we best enable innovation when it comes to the agility of engineering and also development. And then lastly, how do we actually meet regulatory requirements and overcome technical hurdles? So Azure Arc is what provides that single control plane where you're able to position Azure Arc as the bridge between hybrid and multi-cloud, diverse infrastructure, and then of course applications where you could bring that back into Azure and of course bring that data into Microsoft Sentinel. So I have a quick slide here that talks more about what is Azure Arc for those that do, not, that do not know what Azure Arc is. So Azure Arc is a free service. Essentially what it is is that uh, it is enabled by connecting a connected machine agent. So each single server, each single uh, source is going to have a connected machine uh, agent and we're able to tap into that either on-prem or if not in other clouds. The great thing about this is that because we have a connected machine a agent, it basically turns every resource that you bring into Azure Arc, um, just like if you were able to manage a, a Azure server or, or, a, or any Azure service in Azure. The great thing is that, for example, if you're bringing in data sets from Google Cloud, you can actually build on top of that story because now the, the Azure Arc service provides you the flexibility to deploy and manage Azure services on top of that service. Um, something else to note when it comes to security is that by deploying the agent, now we have a secure authentication mechanism. So by, you know, when you deploy that agent, every single service you're bringing into Azure actually gets a managed identity enabled on the machine. So the great thing about that is that from there, you can actually deploy the Azure Monitor agent as an extension, just as, as if you were working with any other Azure server uh, when it comes to Azure. Now, a couple of different steps here for those that want to you know, get more actionable when it comes to how do you actually get to enable uh, Arc on your servers. You, you have to go into the Azure portal, go, go into Azure Arc, select add your infrastructure for free. Then from there, you're able to select which servers you want to go ahead and deploy the extension on. And then from there, all you have to do is just generate the script and you could do that for either a single server or multiple servers. Something that I do want to note, and you know, Maria will definitely cover that um, later on in the in in today's webinar, is that because we have Azure Arc, because we have Azure Monitor Agent, we are definitely able to deploy at scale. So so we can use resources, like for example, uh, Azure Resource Manager, as a way to seamlessly deploy uh, the Azure Monitor Agent at scale. So we talked so far about why the new agent. Uh, you know, how we're able to bring in data from disparate environments. How does Azure Arc fit into the picture when it comes to non-Azure VMs? I think it's very critical for us to talk about the supported scenarios when it comes to the Azure Monitor Agent and also log analytics. So with that being said, I'll give it up to Maria who will cover the supported scenarios that we have right now when it comes to the Azure Monitor Agent. Thanks, Chris. I'll just share my screen now. Hopefully you are seeing my slides already. Um, I would like to start speaking about the feature gap analysis between the log analytics agent and the Azure Monitor agent, because as you will see today, we already saw, have some features that work with uh, the new agent with AMA, but there are still uh, some features where we don't have parity. So it is important to keep in mind which ones those are, and then you can decide how to transition and we will try to give you some tips today on how to plan for that. So in the first place, let's have a look at the uh, feature status for the agent itself and then we'll speak about um, Sentinel. So AMA is, and I'll bring up my laser pointer. So 
AMA is GA already, as you may know, um, same for data collection rules. We'll speak in detail about them, but basically data collection rules work together with AMA to define what is being collected and where it is being sent. So they are a critical resource to AMA. Collection of Windows event logs and performance counters is also GA. Um, custom, custom logs, on the other hand, aren't available today with AMA. So if you want to collect them, um, you will still need to use the Loganlytics agent for now. Uh, connection through proxy and gateway, Loganlytics gateway uh, is supported, it's GA. Regarding operating systems, uh, you can refer to the, the documentation. Uh, we have a variety of uh, operating systems supported by AMA. Uh, for on-prem servers and other clouds, you already heard that, but the connected machine agent or Azure Arc is required. Uh, connection using private links or Azure Monitor private link scope is in private preview, and so is Microsoft Defender for Cloud, formerly known as Azure Defender. And you have the links in the public documentation, so you can sign up directly from the Azure Monitor agent documentation to this private previews if you are interested. And um, another one uh, we added here is the DCR XPath validation. So as you will see later in the X in the DCRs, you can define an XPath query or multiple XPath queries with granular selection of events. And for that, we don't have a validator. So you need to validate your query before you push you publish it on your DCR. We'll also give you some tips on how to do that. Now, the Azure Monitor agent for Microsoft Sentinel, um, let's have a look at the operating system. So for Windows, we have uh, the security events uh, on Microsoft Sentinel. The, we have the connector already GA. And as you will see, you can define the event IDs you want to collect. So you can start transitioning today and one thing you need to watch, watch out for is event duplication. So if you transition from the log analytics agent to AMA um, because you want to run the agent side by side, just make sure that you are not collecting the same security events with both agents because then you will be duplicating data. Then Windows forwarded events is in public preview. We'll also cover this one in detail. And actually here AMA is required. Uh, because of the capacity limitations that Chris mentioned in, in the beginning, um, the log analytics agent uh, never made it to public preview, so we are relying on the AMA for Windows forwarded events, and we reach up to 5,000 uh, events per second with it. Then Windows DNS and Windows firewall collection isn't possible today with log analytics uh, with uh, the Azure Monitor agent, so for this two, you will need to rely on the uh, MMA or log analytics agent. So that's for Windows. And then in regards to Linux, um, it, uh, we have so syslog and uh, syslog, as you will see, if you read the documentation for Azure Monitor agent, you will see that syslog is actually supported by the agent. But for Microsoft Sentinel, we are still using the old agent, the MMA. Um, and the main reason for this is capacity. We are still testing capacity, and uh, as you know, um, you may be you may be even collecting today syslog using uh, Linux servers. And uh, for this scenario, capacity is critical because if you are collecting from uh, firewalls or networking devices, you need to calculate how many EPS you can reach. Therefore, we are still um, asking you to use the uh, log analytics agent. Ceph still does not work on top of AMA. And I also included Sysmon in this list because the um, uh, we recently uh, released a blog post on how to collect Sysmon for Linux based on MMA, but it is also relying on syslog. So when, once syslog is available, you will be able to do it with syslog as well. And to stay on top of this, um, you can uh, uh, apply to the private privy community. If you're not part of it, you have the link in the slide, and then you, you will know when we have updates on the connectors, because as you can see, we are bringing a lot, bringing a lot of updates and innovation uh, to uh, the Azure Monitor agent. But 
how did the Windows security events uh, work before and how does it work now? What's the difference between the Log Analytics agent and the Azure Manager agent? Let's have a look at this. So before with the Log Analytics agent, uh, what we had was our workspace, our Microsoft Sentinel workspace, where we would define what we wanted to collect. So in this case, we selected uh, security events common, but we could also select minimal or all. Um, and then we had the pools of servers either on Azure, on-prem, other clouds, and we would install the agent in each of the servers. And we would pass the workspace ID and workspace key to authenticate against the workspace. And then the, uh, the, the um, servers would start streaming the events we selected at workspace level. This was very simple to set up, but it had and has a major downside, which is that you cannot make a granular selection of what you want to collect. So if you want to uh, collect uh, very specific events from another server, you could not do that because the minute you uh, connect any server to this workspace, you would be collecting common events. And now this has changed. So with the Azure Monitor agent in this example, you can see we have two workspaces. This is just an example. We could have one, we could have multiple. And here I have a Log Analytics workspace and a Microsoft Sentinel workspace. As you may have um, noticed, we are not selecting events here. We are not defining what we want to collect in the workspace. Then on the other hand, we have our Azure pool of servers and we have our on-prem and other clouds, uh, other uh, servers in other clouds. And you may have noted that these ones are in purple now, and that's because we had to install the connected machine agent on top to enable the servers on Azure Arc as requirement. Then we are uh, free to install the Azure Monitor agent and authenticate instead of using a workspace ID and key like before, uh, we will use a managed identity. But then how do we define what we want to collect? Well, that's when uh, data collection rules come into play. So here I have one data collection rule, and as you can see, it has three main parts, streams, destinations, and flows. So in the streams, I'm defining, I want to collect security events common in this example, um, and also perf. And then I'm defining two destinations. One is the Microsoft Sentinel workspace and the other one is the log, the log analytics workspace. And finally, in the flows, I'm saying, I want security events to go to my Microsoft Sentinel workspace and I want my perf events to go to the log analytics workspace. But I could also create uh, more data collection rules. So in this other example, I have a second data collection rule and here, my stream is security events and I'm defining a custom uh, XPath query so that I can very precisely and granularly decide what events I want to collect. And then in my destination, I have my Microsoft Sentinel workspace again. And in the flow, I say, well, my security events go to my Microsoft Sentinel workspace. So this way you can be very specific and have different sets of events and different pools of servers sending um, different uh, selections of events to your workspaces. This wasn't possible before, and that's the major uh, change that you will see when you start working with data collection rules. To connect this, you can now use the new uh, the new data connector called Windows Security Events via AMA, and you will notice that the old one is now called Security Events via Legacy Agent. And by the way, it still works, and it will still work until 2024 when we retire the Log Analytics Agent. But you can start transitioning today, as I said earlier. And once you click here, you will be able to configure your data collection rules. So you'll just click on a add data collection rule. And here then the first thing we need to do is give a name to our um, data collection rule and select a resource group because remember the data collection rule is actually an Azure resource. So we need to deploy it. 
And then in the scope, in the resources tab, we can select uh, one or mul multiple VMs or all the VMs in the subscription as you want. Um, and also your Azure Arc servers will show up here. So you can see them right here. And the third uh, tab is collect. So here again, you have all security events, common, minimal or custom. So this is the new uh, capability we have. So as you can see here, I um, selected an XPath query. I typed an XPath query for security events I wanted to filter out. Um, also, one thing to um, to uh, keep in mind is that if you deploy a DCR on a VM that still does not have the Azure Monitor agent installed, by deploying the DCR, it will trigger the installation of the agent. So you can install the agent just by deploying the DCR uh, against the VMs of your choice. And once you do this, events will start flowing to the security event table, just like they did with the uh, old or legacy connector. So that's Windows security events. Another feature we have now in public preview is Windows forwarded events. So the interesting thing about this connector is that it allows you to install the agent only on the collector machines. Let's see how that works. Actually, this is based on the Windows event forwarding feature that comes with Windows and which allows to read any operational or administrative event log on a device in your organization and then forward it to a collector. So it enables you to collect any event from any Windows client that's compatible uh, with the Windows event forwarding feature. So the way to do this or the way to set it up is first, you need to make sure that the WinRM service is started. Then uh, you need to create a subscription in your uh, collector so we are creating a subscription in our web server. Um, in the subscription, we will define, I will show you in a minute uh, in, in the environment, but you, you'll define what you want to collect and from what servers. Then uh, you will create a group policy that points uh, the clients to the uh, collector or the subscription manager. Then the clients will request the details of the subscription and the subscription will include the events that need to be collected. Finally, the, uh, the clients will send the events via Windows event forwarding and they will land in the forwarded events section of the Windows event collector. And then the last step, and this is the, the step where we need AMA is you will install AMA on your collector or collectors if you have multiple. And the, the AMA will pick the events in the forwarded events. So then um, it will start collecting the events um, on your workspace. Let me just show you on, um, the, on a real environment what it looks like. So here I have uh, I have actually three machines. Um, I have a, a domain controller, then two VMs, and I set up in my um, in my domain controller a subscription. So first I made sure that the WinRM um, um, service started. If it's not started, you can uh, also start it on PowerShell, and then here you will create your subscription. Um, if I edit it, you will see this one is collector initiated. I can select a computer. So here I have two computers and then I can define the events I want to collect. And I am collecting, in this case, I am collecting all security events, um, but I could select any of these and I can also define the event IDs I want to collect uh, right here. So this is my subscription. And then I also have a group policy um, where I have set up event forwarding. 
so within my uh, policy, I have set up my my uh, target subscription manager. By default, this will be disabled. And right here, after you enable it, you'll be able also to set up your subscription managers. In this case, I have my domain controller. Um, and uh, just by doing this, then I get my forwarded events in Event Viewer. So if I go to Event Viewer, you can see my uh, machines, or in this case, this one, for example, is VM01, are forwarding information uh, of the events I selected, in this case security events, to the collector. So then on the um, on the Sentinel side, I can go to connectors and I can use the uh, Windows forwarded events connector and add my data collection ruling here. So um, as you can see, I already have one. I'll just show you. So again, I need to give it a name um, and a resource group. In the resources, I selected my domain controller, which is the collector, and uh, this is where I'm getting the events. And here I can select whether I want to collect all events or uh, custom. So if I select all events, I am picking all the events in the forwarded events folder that you just saw. Um, if I select custom, I can filter on top of the forwarded events. And then I'll just review and create. And by doing this, I will start getting events in the Windows events table. So note this one is the Windows events table. And I can also um, use ASIM to normalize the, the logs um, so you can deploy the, uh, the parser. So you can query these logs together with your security event logs. That's how you would set it up on the um, on the Sentinel side. So let me get back to my slides. And now we will talk about uh, data collection rules. OK. So data collection rules, we, we said already, they define what events should be collected and where those events will be sent. Um, when you create a data collection rule using uh, Sentinel, as you just saw, you don't really need to do much. You just need to define the resources and the expat query if you want to define specific events. But um, let's see what the DCR looks like inside in case you want to edit it also using API or PowerShell. So um, as we said earlier, it has three parts. One is the data sources. Um, so here you can see the stream. If, if you use Sentinel and you select the security event connector, the stream will automatically be set to Microsoft Dash security event. If you uh, went to Azure Monitor and deployed the data collection rule from there and selected performance events, then the stream would be Microsoft Dash perf. But the, the, the UX and UI will take care of the selection for you. So this is for security events. And this is the XPath query. In this case, it's the XPath query for common events. Um, we could also defi define a specific or granular events using an XPath query. In fact, as you can see, we have uh, five uh, queries here. You can have multiple queries. Uh, we'll speak about also limits in a minute. Then we have the destination. So here we have the workspace resource ID, the workspace ID and a name, which is an alias we can define. And in the last step, we have the data flow. So this is the stream and it's flowing to the alias we define for our workspace. And that's how you would set up a data collection rule. Um, then XPath queries. Um, as you saw, you can still select all common or minimal, but what if you want to collect, for example, um, in this case, I want to collect one, two, nine, nine, four, six, two, four, and so on. So I, 
will use the XPath query format and I will define it like this. This contains nine expressions. We have nine event IDs, so nine expressions. But um, as we also have consecutive events here from 4661 to 4665, I can also um, write it in a different way. So I can use the greater than and less than uh, encoded characters to define consecutive IDs. And this is useful because then my expression is, uh, my, my XPath query contains five expressions instead of nine. This is another example for system level one events, for example. Okay. Um, I said earlier that the, um, the DCR uh, UI does not validate the XPath query for you. So how can you validate it? It's important to make sure your XPath query is correct because if you deploy DCR and the, the XPath query is incorrect, you will notice it's not working, but um, you won't get an error message, right? At least not for now. So um, one option for this is to use the get win event commandlet that's part of the Microsoft PowerShell diagnostics module. And by doing this, you can validate your XPath. So uh, also a few comments uh, to keep in mind. You will see when you create the DCR, we recommend to include up to 20 expressions, but the get win event commandlet accepts up to 23. So when you create it, keep it to 20. Um, and then you can just uh, use this uh, commandlet with log name security and filter the XPath, filter XPath plus the XPath you defined. And if you defined it, it correctly, on as you see on the on the animated GIF on on the left, you will get events for, from your server. If your XPath is incorrect, then you will get an error saying the XPath query is not valid. That's how you can validate it. Also, as I mentioned earlier, if you want to define consecutive events, you can do that by using the ampersand LT semicolon and ampersand GT semicolon. But if you are using this in um, with the get win event commandlet, uh, do not use the encoded characters. Just a few tips. So when you do your validation, um, it's a bit easier. And then, as I said, there are some limits for data collection rules. Um, so the maximum number of XPath queries that you can include in an in event log for um, a DCR is 100. And each one of these queries can contain up to 20 expressions. So you can put a lot of events within one data collection rule. But if this isn't enough, then you can also create multiple data collection rules. The maximum number of log analytics workspaces is 10 for one single DCR. And the maximum number of data flows is 10 as well. OK, so um, we mentioned how to deploy the agent and how to install the agent. But what if you want to do it at scale? Because normally in your environment, you will have several hundreds maybe of servers, right? So um, Deploying it manually doesn't seem like a good option. Um, so there are three steps outlined here. The first one is how to enable the Azure Arc, uh, Azure Arc for your on-prem or and IS uh, servers um, at scale. You have instructions that you can find right here, uh, but the, basically the steps are to create a service principle in the first place um, on Active Directory, and you will give it the Azure Connected Machine Onboarding role that only has permissions to onboard a machine on Arc. Then you can generate a script to onboard uh, multiple servers at once. You do this from the Azure portal, um, Azure Arc, and then uh, taking the script template uh, created earlier, you can install and configure the connected machines agent using your organization's preferred automation tool. Uh, the script uses the AZC ma management command, and there you will put your service principal ID and secret so that it uh, connects uh, directly to Azure using the service principal. That's the first step. 
uh, assuming you want to onboard uh, an uh, non-prem or a server located in another cloud, if it's an Azure one, you can skip this one, this step. In the second uh, step, you need to enable a managed identity in your Azure servers. So for ARC, this is not required because uh, by enabling ARC, you, this is already taken care of for you. And for your Azure servers, you may already have a managed identity. So you only need to take the step if you don't have a managed identity enabled in your uh, uh, VMs. And the third step would be to install the Azure Monitor agent at scale. The recommended approach here would be you to use uh, Azure policy. There are two policies that you can use. One deploys the Azure Monitor agent, and the second one creates um, and deploys an association that links the virtual machines to a data collection rule. So you need both steps. Just note that Azure policy guest configuration has a cost for, uh, for ARC servers. So um, if you don't want to use Azure policy, although of course it has other benefits because it can also remediate non-compliant machines, but if you don't want to use it, um, remember that Azure Arc makes your machine also compatible with uh, Azure CLI or ARM templates. And you can also use PowerShell and you have in the links, you have instructions on how to do all of this. OK, so um, I would like to show you a workbook that has been created by my colleagues, Naomi Christie's, Matt Lowe and myself. This uh, workbook isn't available yet for you to find, but in the next few days it should be published. So hopefully you'll find it very soon. And um, it basically allows you to see what your migration status looks like. Let's have a look at it. Um, directly on the portal. So I have it here. And um, as you will see, this one has three tabs. The first one is uh, showing you the servers and the extensions you have installed, um, namely AMA or MMA. So you can see your Azure uh, machines within the subscriptions, your um, ARC machines as well, then your uh, Azure or ARC machines with uh, the Log Analytics agent and with the Azure Monitoring agent. And also machines with both agents um, and machines reporting non Azure or hybrid VMs uh, reporting to to the selected uh, workspace. You have some filters on the top to select multiple subscriptions, uh, workspaces, even if you want to filter by resource group, you can also do that. Then in the second tab, you get a view of your data collection rules under the subscription. So you can see for each of the rules, you can see the stream that is basically the table it's writing to. So security event, events, is log, and then XPath, the XPath query that's being used. The syslog facilities, if any, remember, as I said, syslog is already works for AMA. We are just not using it yet on Microsoft Sentinel, but that's why you, you see some examples here. Um, and then if you click on one of them, you can see the VMs that are associated to the selected data collection rule. The third tab shows kind of the opposite view. So here uh, you can see your Azure and hybrid VMs that already have AMA installed. And you can click on any of them to see information on the data collection rules that are applying. So for this example, this one has three data collection rules. If I select my uh, the VM uh, I showed you earlier where I'm collecting um, forwarded events, you can see I have this one and the stream is Windows event. The XPath is forwarded events because I am collecting all forwarded events. I did not specify any in particular. And right below, you also get a view for the last 30 days of for, uh, for the specific machine that you selected, um, how many events you got for, the, uh, for some of the main tables like security event, heartbeat, perf, or event. And you also have another view specific for Windows event for forwarded events. So this is the workbook and um, 
we hope you find it useful and that you can start using it very soon. So now I have uh, another Paul Everywhere question for you. I am going to reshare the deck. And the question is, if your organization is planning to move to AMA in the short term, the first question is, uh, uh, sorry, the first option is if you are planning to fully replace the log analytics agent with AMA, um, or if you're planning to run them side by side, or if you're waiting for a feature uh, parity. So I enabled the question a few minutes ago and I can see you already responded. Some people are responding now, so I'll just give you a few seconds. And by the way, in the next slide, we will also try to give you some guidance on this. So thanks so much for uh, your votes. You can keep voting, it's, it's open. Okay, so to the question, should I migrate to AMA now? Um, well, as we said earlier, the log analytics agent will be retired in August 2024. So there is plenty of time, right? But uh, we do recommend that you start planning your transition today. And to do that, uh, you probably want to make an inventory of what you're collecting today. So it could be security events, uh, also Microsoft Defender for Cloud. Um, you may be collecting perf or other events that are not supported. Maybe you're collecting custom events, custom logs uh, or DNS firewall. So make a list of what you have. And then rather than thinking about replacing one agent with the other, um, a better approach might be to consider migrating scenarios, right? And running the agent side by side. So that's also an option. Some blockers to fully migrate today, so to fully replace one agent with the other. So the main blockers would be Microsoft Defender for Cloud, the fact that's in private preview, um, Windows DNS uh, events, Windows Firewall events, and custom logs, because these ones are not available yet with um, Azure Monitor Agent. But there are also drivers and reasons to migrate uh, to AMA, at least the scenarios where you can migrate, like uh, cost, sa cost savings. So cost savings is probably the, the main driver, thanks to the granular filtering of events. If you know what you want to collect and from where, then you could start doing it already and it will certainly help. Um, or if you want to set up a Windows event forwarding environment with the advantage uh, that it brings, which is that you don't need to install the agent in every single server. Instead, you can just set it up on and install it on the collector servers. And again, I want to emphasize, I mentioned earlier, but I want to emphasize that you need to disable uh, the security events via legacy agent. Once you have verified your events are flowing uh, through the new agent, through the new connector to avoid duplication. So you may want to enable uh, the new agent. And as soon as you verify that, disable the old connector uh, to avoid this duplication. And finally, we have a slide with some useful resources. Um, and that's all we had to share today. We hope uh, this was helpful and, and interesting. Thank you so much, um, Maria, for your presentation. I know that we have a few questions here. Um, the first one is, why do forwarded events go to Windows event table and not to the security event table? So um, Windows forwarded events, as you as you probably noticed, you can bring not just security events, but you can bring any event that is su supported by uh, the Windows event forwarding feature on Windows. So the Windows event table is um, um, has a schema that's compatible with all the events, not just security events. That's why we are using the Windows event table uh, for forwarded event scenario. OK, thank you. And then we just have two more questions. Um, what is a DCRA? 
so a DCRA is a data collection rule association. And if you noticed um, when we were speaking about data collection rules, the data collection rule doesn't actually contain the VMs that it is collecting from. It just collects the what and the where it goes, right? But not where you're collecting from. So the association is what you create when you want to associate a virtual machine to one or multiple uh, data collection rules. OK, thank you. And then the final question um, is multi homing possible? Yes, um, actually, uh, so for Windows, um, it was already possible with the Log Analytics agent, but for Linux, this is a this is uh, new and for Linux, we also support multi homing with uh, the new agent with AMA. Once it is available for Microsoft Sentinel, you'll be able to enjoy that. Great. Well, thank you so much, Christopher and Maria, for being our guests today and for an excellent presentation. And thank you to the rest of the team who helped answer questions. At the same time, I would like to remind the listeners that the best way to ensure you don't miss any future webinars or major announcements is to visit our landing page at aka.ms slash security community. And while there, you'll find easy ways to navigate and find the resources and learning content relevant to our security products and their communities. A good start would be browsing our bite-sized product videos, ninja trainings, recordings of past webinars, GitHub communities, and more. We love to hear your feedback on how we can improve these webinars. Please take a minute submitting your webinar feedback at aka.ms slash security webinar feedback. Thank you and see you next time. Goodbye.